On this episode of Cars with Jay, I review the Fiesta ST Mark 7.5. Today I'm driving a 2017 five door Mark 7.5 Fiesta ST. So before I talk about this car, I want to talk about car journalists. So when journalists get cars, they're usually brand new. They've just come out, they're on sale for their retail price, which for this car, this ST3 five door, is about 22 and a half thousand pounds. So when you're reviewing a car that's 22 and a half thousand pounds, and it's a car like this, you will scrutinize little details of the car a lot more than you would if the car was half its price so they are really good value for money so reviewing one now I'm thinking of the car as a £10,000 car I really wanted to review one of these cars and luckily my friend Joey has one and uh, the reason why is because I think in my opinion this is the modern day Clio 182. The Fiesta ST has a turbocharged four-cylinder 1.6 litre engine that produces 179 brake horsepower. It's a rather light car weighing in at just over one tonne. This gives the car a power to rate ratio of 164.5 brake horsepower which is seven less than the Clio 182 and 40 less than the Mark II Focus RS. Due to its turbocharged engine, the torque figures have increased over its predecessor, allowing it to make up for the decreased displacement. The ST produces 242 newton meters or 177 pounds feet of torque. All this combined, the ST will do a respectable 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds and achieve a top speed of 139 miles an hour. So this car has got a few modifications. It's got a turbo back exhaust from Miltec. It's got a CE intake, and it's also had a remap pushing it up to. 220 horsepower from 180 brake horsepower and it's also affected other things like torque and the throttle response so it's a modified Fiesta ST but I wouldn't let that worry you it drives pretty much like a standard one except it's got a little bit more power so I'll be a bit delicate on the throttle but I'll get to the modifications later because there's a lot you can do with this car and I think that's why it's such a popular choice for people that are looking to buy their second or even third car the Fiesta SD3 comes really well equipped with features such as sat nav, reversing camera, power folding mirrors and, my personal favourite, heated leather seats which really do support you when driving spiritedly. There are other variants of the ST, including the ST1, ST2 and this ST3. The ST3 comes so well equipped that it's basically a no-brainer and one that I would personally go for when looking to buy. Although it doesn't look as stylish as its other competitors, it is still a nice, relatively nice looking cabin. It could be modernised, but they've recently launched the new Mark 8 Fiesta ST. It's now a three cylinder 1.5 litre, and it does look more modern than this car, but if anything, it's going to reduce the values of this car. So if you're looking for a, a Fiesta ST, this is probably the best time to buy one. Okay, so let's talk about what it's like to drive. Because it's based off a standard Fiesta, I can expect it to be quite easy to drive, and it is definitely very easy to drive. The clutch pedal is light, the steering's relatively light, and it doesn't feel that stressful to get, just jump in and drive. So the steering on this car feels like a compromise between a car that you can drive spiritedly and a car you can use every single day. Um, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy, and it's reasonably light when driving at low speeds. So it does do the best of both worlds, but there is definitely a compromise. You can feel that compromise. In terms of accuracy, it's extremely accurate. I mean, you can point and shoot this car and it will go in the direction that you want to. I mean, this car's designed to be extremely playful. It's front wheel drive, so you can do things such as trail braking, heel and towing, and rev matching, because it encourages you to do so. And to be honest, rev matching, it's just so effortless in this car. For example, I'm gonna I'm in fourth gear right now. If I was gonna drop it to third, you can just do it so effortlessly. And with this car being remapped, it's definitely eager to get going. But it's still so much fun. If that's why I say it feels like a Clio 182, because it encourages you to get up in the rev range, play with the car, allow the chassis to dance around, and that's what a hot hatch should be. So this for me 
is still on the cusp of what hot hatch should be and with the cars going automatic nowadays turbocharged even though this is turbocharged Ford managed to design this car really really well and it's kind of still kept its soul and its youth let's talk about the pedals on this car because um, when I've been driving the car I've noticed the pedals actually have quite a lot of travel it's not necessarily a bad thing I mean the feedback and resistance from them are quite good usually in sports cars based off standard cars like the Fiesta in this case your clutch pedal tends to be really light because it's a car that's designed to be used every day by any person around town usually so you don't want the clutch to be too heavy because obviously that's going to be too laborious and you don't want that kind of uh, unnecessary effort that you need to put into the car when driving it so the clutch pedal on this is slightly heavier than like a standard fiesta uh, but it's good because it gives you that kind of feedback it allows you to work with the pedals when you're changing gear and driving spiritedly and i think all in all it's enjoyable you don't tend to think about the pedals more than once you kind of just get in it and go and that's what it should be about um, some people prefer a lot of pedal travel some people don't in terms of biting point the biting point is quite high in this car it gives you that kind of control at lower speeds and in terms of acceleration you can the pedal travels not too much but the throttle is quite sensitive so then, let me get onto the sport mode button because the sport mode button really changes the way this vehicle drives. So in a standard Fiesta ST, I'm just going to remind you that this car is not standard. In a standard Fiesta ST, when you press the sport mode button, it allows the car to go into overboost. Essentially what that does, it takes it from 180 brake horsepower to 200 horsepower, just giving you that extra little boost. So if you want to overtake someone or you're pulling out of a corner, you can get up to speed really, really quickly. With this car, because it's already remapped to 220 brake horsepower, there or thereabouts, it doesn't necessarily have this overboost function, but pressing the sport mode button allows the throttle response to sharpen up and allows the car to become a little bit more engaging to drive. Not that it already wasn't when the button was off. Now that we have it in sport mode, I can definitely hear a lot more induction noise. I can definitely hear a lot more from the blower valve and the exhaust tones change slightly. So in terms of performance driving, when I went down to the Nürburgring in my Clio 182, I ended up renting one of these for five laps and I did five consecutive laps of the Nürburgring in the Fiesta ST. Now bearing in mind, I didn't drive the car before. I had only driven one, actually, I've only driven one previously, but just literally up the road. It wasn't anything spectacular. And I drove, I now had one that I was gonna take around the Nürburgring, a track that I had never really been around before and I did five consecutive laps and I drove the car flat out so confidently. In terms of balance, it, the car allowed me to really go hard with it and drive it hard on the Nürburgring with confidence and I managed to do five laps without any incident at all, thank God. So it is a really, really well balanced car. It is a definition of a hot hatch, uh, not to the fullest extent, but it still is a modern day definition of a hot hatch. It has its character, the steering wheel's playful, it's very, very light into corners. The back end is extremely light as well, and that's another thing with this car. It's quite tall. You do sit low down in it. You can probably see by the headroom above me. You do sit low down in it, but the chassis is very, very narrow and very, very tall, which allows the back end to kick out if you're not too careful around corners, which, if you know how to control it, is a bit of fun. But if you don't know how to control it, it can be a bit scary at sometimes. In terms of the gearbox, the gears are really well weighted actually in terms of pulling it into gear there's a nice resistance to it the gear knobs are a bit of an awkward shape but it's still ergonomical and you do feel like your hand does take to it after a few minutes of driving to be honest it doesn't take long to get used to it the gears are relatively easy to slot into it but you get this nice little hook when you get into it and it kind of lets you know the gears are properly engaged which I find is very important because a lot of modern cars the gearboxes are so light that when you put it into gear you don't actually know you've put it into gear and it, it kind of makes you think hang on a minute is this going to jump out so at least with this car you know that you've slotted it into gear because you can feel it and it's got a six-speed transmission which for motorway driving is actually really really good because this car on fuel economy driving it hard is not very good However, when you drive it on the motorway in six gear, you could probably average 38 miles per gallon, 40 miles per gallon. And for a car that can be a track car, it can be an everyday car, shopping car, you name it. I think that's extremely good that it can also take on the motorway tasks without too much compromise on fuel. 
So in terms of modifications, this car is actually modified. It's got a remap, so it's taking it from 180 brake to 220 brake, affecting its torque figures and also affecting the throttle response. It has a Miltec turbo back exhaust system and it has a CE intake system. All in all, it's made the car a little bit more dramatic. There's a lot more intake noise, there's a lot more induction noise. And there's also a lot more exhaust noise. They get a bit of popping and banging every now and then. it's given the car enough power so that it doesn't ruin the balance too much I can say it does kind of need a limited slip diff even with 220 brake horsepower it does torque steer a bit and it's to be expected especially in the weather we're in now it's January it's quite greasy on the road so you're gonna get a little bit of slip especially in second gear as you go higher up in the rev range but obviously it's not hard to control it a bit left for braking easing off the accelerator and it'd be extremely easy for you to just manage it. So 220 brakes, easily manageable, but I would put an LSD in there, but for everyone, it's not always the easiest option because they cost about a grand and you've got to install them. So there's extra cost on top of that. But if you can afford one, then definitely go for it. And then you could probably push more power if you wanted to. Now the 1.6 engine in this car that Ford have developed is the strongest engine that they make today or used to make. You can really get a lot of power out of these without replacing any stock internals. I think comfortably the car will sit at 330 brake horsepower, 350 brake horsepower with turbo supporting mods. And I've seen companies take this car up to like 450, 500 brake horsepower using stock internals, obviously with different turbos, uh, front mount intercoolers, injectors, you name it, but it's using stock internals. So it means you can pump a lot of money into the engine without actually stripping it apart and you still get a really really fast lightweight car now in terms of balance that might ruin it a little bit but you've got to factor in other elements like tires uh, weighting the roll anti-roll bar suspension uh, which also come into play to make sure the car's balanced but then that comes to preference and the way that you as an individual set up the car buying a used one of these so you can pick one up uh, Fiesta ST3 mark 7.5 five door for twelve thousand nine hundred pounds as the cheapest on auto trader um, the cheapest st3 that we saw was seven thousand pounds and that was a cat s but you can get a non cat s version for eight and a half thousand pounds one thing to be mindful of though is that maybe you're not going to pay for the car outright cash so you probably want to look at finance in terms of finance these cars are absolutely phenomenal I think Ford recognise, and most dealers recognise that people quite young want to be able to buy these cars, considering their 1.6 insurance isn't too much, although it really is dependent on where you live and your circumstances, to be honest, whether, whether or not the insurance is cheap, it might be for you, it might not be for other people. Financing on this car, you can look at £1,500 down and about £180, £200 a month, which is not bad at all, considering how much car you get for the money. And that's probably a PCP example. Obviously, you need to get quotes, but that's roughly what you're looking at for a car, say, 10 to 12,000 pounds. Even that, if you get the cheaper options, just get a bank loan or something like that. The interest rates are hardly anything nowadays. And you have a relatively new car, which is a couple years old. All the creature comforts that a new car should have. And it's a great driver's car with so much potential. The community as well is extremely big for these cars. I mean, even today we ended up going to a Ford meet at Northweld Airfield and there was loads of enthusiasts there and we saw a bunch of different variants of this car with a bunch of different mods. A lot of people strip out the cars, put bucket seats in there, uh, obviously you get the remaps, induction kits and exhaust modifications and also suspension and tyres and even six pot brakes if you're that crazy. Um, and all in all, it, does take the car into a different league but I think this car should be left alone um, stock the car is enough and I think learning to drive a hot hatch and a front wheel drive car spiritedly and quickly and doing little nifty tricks like Scandinavian flicking it into a roundabout for example I do think that this car as a stock car is extremely capable and that you should be able to learn that to its limits before you start exploring more power because you might find that having more power you still don't even use it you just go in a straight line whereas that's not what this car is about this car is about going into corners and really really 
getting to grips with how the car reacts. As well as hearing my feedback on the car, I think it's beneficial if you hear the feedback from the owner. So on the side of me, we have Joey, the owner of the ST that I'm driving now. And in the back, we have Tommy, who owns a highly modified Fiesta ST running 330 brake horsepower. Both Tommy's and Joey's Instagram account will be linked in the description below. So did, I, did you have a Fiesta before this? I had, when I first passed my test, I had a 1.25 Fiesta um, Z-Tec. It was a 65 plate, and then I had after I got rid of that, a red edition, so that's the one liter eco boost. Um, that was 140 horsepower. That was a mad little car. That's like the best car that you can get, I think, if you pass your test. Like, you will pay more on in insurance, but you're not gonna pay like ST territory money. Um, and obviously you can mod it, because it has a turbo. So it's like a baby ST? Kinda, yeah, it's a pokey little engine. I really like them. Um, and then I got rid of that, and obviously I got this ST. But because this is my third ST, it's kind of, just dull for me now. The power is amazing and the engine's amazing and everything that you get with the car is cool, but it's just the fact that it is another like Fiesta. For me, yeah, because I've because I've already had like, I've sat behind three Fiesta steering wheels for an extended period of time. Like it's just the same thing. Like yeah, the, the seats are different and there's an extra gear on this one, but. I think they should have had more power on the offset because you've got things like the Peugeot 208 GTI, um, Corsa VXR, they're all 200 horsepower. I yeah. mean, even the uh, the Clio, the, the new Clio Sport, that's like 220, I think, if you get the trophy one. Yeah, just around that, yeah. That's like, that's way more power than this is. Like, I think this would be still more fun to drive, even though it's 180, because it's just more nimble. But I think it's just, it could have had an extra 20 horsepower and it would have made a difference. Because some people, like, when you're playing top trumps, it matters how much horsepower you have, yeah. Got. No, it's a shame it comes down to that, because like, I bet you most of those people who talk about their horsepower and their cars can't even drive their cars to like the full limit. Probably not. I mean, like most people that are like really concerned about horsepower and stuff like that, and like the figures side of things. Like if you you say to them like, how do you like heel and toe downshift? And people are like, oh, well, what, what, what's that? When you were looking to get this car, is there anything else you looked at? No. Funny story about when I went to go and buy this car. We weren't meant to buy a car. Was not meant to buy a car. I worked oh, right. for Deranged, as you know, um, and we had a few trucks in Ford Gates, and I wanted to go down and see them, so me and Tommy went to go, and as we walked in, this car was parked outside on the forecourt, and this is when I had my red edition, and I was like, that car's beautiful, because this car has five doors. This is a, like, the five door STs are kind of rare, there's not many of them on the road, so I thought, oh, I'll go and get one, because it's different. And when I see it, I was like, yeah, I want that. I had no intention of buying a car. I saw it, and I was like, five-door ST, I want it. And then, yeah, like two weeks later, the car was mine. Yeah, which is like really unique, isn't it, five-door ST? I mean, like, it's an ST3, which has got like all of the gizmos and stuff like that, heated yeah. seats, it's leather. It's like a really comfortable place to be in. But like five doors, didn't you kind of, didn't you want a three-door or anything like that? Or was it just? Three doors are cool, but like, when you when your best mate has like thirty thousand subscribers and drives a high powered three door ST, like you have to do something if you're going to get an ST to stand out. So five doors to is be slightly fair, different. Yeah, I've never seen a five door ST. Yeah, before. a lot of people are like they made it in five door. Yeah, like, yeah, a lot of people when I got this, they was like, oh, that's a replica. Blah, blah, blah. And, and someone like, said shouted that to you. It was yeah, like, buy a real ST. It was like, I was driving down the four on four. Someone shouted at me, buy a real ST. I was like, this isn't a rep. <laughs> this is an ST. I was like, if you educate yourself, you will know that they made them for about a year. I think STs are cool and they're all fun and games and they're great to drive, but you just need to be able to insure it. And the problem is there are so many other cars that you can insure that would have maybe more power than this and they're so much cheaper because these are so easy to steal. If you buy one of these, you have to buy a disc lock. If you watch Tommy's video of me picking up mine, it's literally the first thing we've done when we, we left the We went out for the bought one. Oh. So, my Fiesta, obviously, if, if you watch my channel, you'd know that I just post up like it's literally for sale now. I've had it for my ST for almost three years. Like I remember when you picked that up. I know, I almost cried in the video myself selling it. I love it. <laughs> I literally love it. It's, it's such a sick car to have, like, for like a young driver and that, you can just throw them around, beat them out of them, and they love it. They just they just want more, like, you can put silly amount of power in it, like, you can take stock A45s and Focus RSs and stuff that shouldn't be in the same league as what a Fiesta is. It kind of is funny, yeah. Yeah, and like, you, like I've got BC Racing coilovers on mine, and 
the handling is just amazing but obviously I want to get onto bigger and better things now but the Fiesta I still think is like a, a solid benchmark of what a hot hatch should it be. Is, yeah, it's one of the best hot hatches that has in our ever generation. been No, it's ever been made. Yeah. I think that the my personal best hot hatch that's ever been made is the Clio 182. Oh, I love the Clio oh, right. 182. I had one, I loved it. Wait, you had a Clio 182? I had a Clio 182. Yeah, you yeah. did. Who didn't have a Clio 182? They're just, they're such a good car. Like, you can't really modify them that much unless you buy like a turbo kit and stuff. But, my God, are they just amazing cars. But this is probably my close second. So, in my opinions, if you were to buy this car, I would 100% definitely recommend that you go and test drive one and you do try it. I think you'll find that the turbocharged engine is not an issue at all and that you really click with the car. It's just up to you if you want to face the stigma of owning a Fiesta in today's world, especially as a young adult. Uh, I know people get a lot of stick for owning these cars and they are quite common. So if you want something that's a bit more unique, maybe you want to look elsewhere, but purely as a driver's car, it is very, very engaging and very, very fun to drive. Looking to buy a Fiesta ST, be mindful that the earlier models between 2013 and 2014 were prone to flywheel failure. Ford replaced these under warranty, so it's important to make sure that you check that the vehicle you are looking at has had this done. Finance options for around £180 with £1,500 down, an incredible 1.6 litre turbocharged engine with tuning capabilities up to 330 brake horsepower and stock power at 180, it's no wonder why the Fiesta ST is so popular amongst today's car youth. Bar the stereotypes, it's fantastic value for money and I highly recommend one. I hope you enjoyed this video of Cars with Jay, please give it a like rating and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.